This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba for another technical diving tips, techniques, and trips video. Some divers have difficulty reading the numbers on a compass. Other divers have difficulty keeping the compass level. Alternatives do exist to assist these divers with improving their navigation skills. Some of you may be familiar with the RJE International Underwater Compass Navigation Board. Different versions of this compass board are used by military dive teams for underwater combat operations. In this video, what we're going to do is talk about how to construct a less uh, robust and less expensive version of this specifically for recreational diving. A bubble style compass is used instead of a flat card compass. This type of compass is much more forgiving than the flat card. So the compass continues to operate at greater non-level attitudes. The compass board also has an analog depth gauge. This is essential in zero visibility where the diver must maintain the same depth. A third feature is a bend in the board itself. This allows the diver to easily see the compass bubble and also the depth gauge at the same time. A fourth feature is the presence of a reusable slate and pencil at the bottom of the compass board. This enables the diver to record significant data for multi-leg navigation courses. This can include not only the heading, but also the number of fin cycles. So if you're still watching the video at this point, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to make your own navigation board uh, at minimal expense. Some of these components, like the compass and the board itself, you'll probably have to purchase, uh, but other items such as the slate and the uh, depth gauge, uh, you might have one laying around that you can use for this particular project. For the board that everything gets mounted on, I'll generally use an 11 by 8.5 by 1 8 inch uh, piece of Kydex material. This particular material uh, is very important to use as we are going to be thermoforming the board in order to put the bend in it. Kydex being a form of plastic is also very easy to drill, which we'll need to do to mount the slate, and it also accepts uh, some glues very readily. We will be gluing on both the compass and the depth gauge to the board. So what I'm going to do in this uh, video clip is I'm going to go through the process of uh, thermoforming uh, the Kydex sheet which is on the ground. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, two pieces of wood and uh, I'm trying to localize the soft part uh, that I'm going to have for the bend. And you only get one shot at this. Uh, so if you uh, stick this in the wrong place and your bend is in the wrong place, then uh, it's going to, uh, your process is going to get messed up. So. It's a good idea to have multiple pieces of, um, of Kydex uh, when you do this. All right, so I'm gonna put this on uh, some temperature, about let's say 600 degrees, and it's important to keep the uh, heat gun moving. All right, so there's gonna be a little bit of noise when I go through this next process. So I'm moving this uh, back and forth a little bit. Uh, I don't want to scorch the Kydex. Uh, and uh, you might have to go through this a couple of times uh, to make sure that you do it properly. Uh, but um, I'm going to be uh, heating it up here. And the Kydex will actually get very, very soft. And uh, one other thing, uh, there's two sides to the Kydex. Uh, there's one side that's very pebbly. Uh, and dull in color, and then the other side, which is uh, a little bit uh, finer pebble finish, uh, and is uh, is a shiny. 
so I'm going to bend this um, I'm gonna bend this toward me and I don't know if you can see this in the video or not but I did put a little scribe line in there uh, on the kydex so that I could tell uh, where the uh, where the bend is supposed to be So this process of getting the kydex hot enough uh, could be a little bit of a trial and error process uh, in order to uh, to do this. Okay, so I'm still in the process of heating it up. I smell a little bit of burning plastic right now, so it must be getting must be getting close. Alright, so I'm going to turn this off and uh, I'm going to readjust my piece of uh, wood here and then I'm going to, before it cools down, I'm going to start uh, trying to bend it. Okay, so it is still way not uh, hot enough, so I'm going to continue, I'm going to continue heating it up for a couple more minutes. Uh, I might turn on my uh, heat a little bit higher, maybe maybe toward 800 degrees. Uh, as long as I keep this moving, I'll be okay. Let's give this a little shot. Yep, it looks real soft now. Okay, so you can see it's pretty soft here. And uh, I might even want to use my other piece of wood to uh, help me with this, getting a good bend. You want to keep the bend as flat as possible without a distortion. If you do distort it, then what could possibly happen is you could have a problem with the uh, mounting the components. Okay, so this is really pretty hot. I've got about a 45 degree angle. I'm sure you could use some kind of jig if you wanted to be real precise about this. But uh, this is what I've got for now. Alright, so... I'm just in the process of letting this cool down a little bit and when it cools down it will have the approximate uh, the approximate angle that I'm looking for hopefully sometimes you can uh, redo a little piece or side if it doesn't come out quite right Okay, and there's my bend. It looks pretty good. You're never going to get a 100% uh, sharp corner. Uh, okay, alright, so that's our first step. That's our thermal folding, molding, and uh, the purpose of that is so that you can look at the compass uh, directly from the side and also see the, uh, the depth gauge down here. Using the slate as a template, there are two existing holes uh, in the bottom of the slate, and I'm going to use those to drill two holes in the actual kydex material itself. In this image, I've drilled two more holes, uh, this time in the top of the slate, and I have affixed the slate to the kydex with 4 by 40 nuts and bolts. When we mount the depth gauge on the compass board, we need to make sure that we do not obscure the actual depth sensor themselves. On some depth gauges, the depth sensor area is located on the back of the gauge. And in this case, we have four small holes which uh, have water enter into them. And then 
uh, activate the depth mechanism. So when we install the depth gauge on the compass board, we have to make sure that these four holes are exposed. There are two ways of doing this. Uh, the first way is to drill four small holes in the exact correct position to allow water uh, to be exposed to the uh, depth sensors. The other way is to drill one large hole which will encompass all four of the holes. Because the four sensor holes are not symmetrically located on the back of the depth gauge, in many cases it's much easier just to drill one large hole but you will need a special hole saw in order to do this. Here is the top of the compass board with the depth gauge cemented onto it. Here is the underside of the kydex. You can clearly see the four holes are exposed through the one large hole in the kydex. These holes must be exposed in order for the depth sensor to work properly. Here is an image of the compass cemented to the top of the kydex. One of the finishing touches that you may want to add is a lanyard and a bolt snap. Here I have drilled a small hole at the bottom of the compass board and have used a split ring for securing the bolt snap and lanyard. One of the enhancements that I'm still working on is being able to illuminate the compass board for night navigation. I am currently experimenting with a number of underwater light markers. For ecological reasons, I am not considering any type of one-use glow stick. There is an electronic equivalent and perhaps that will be suitable. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba. I hope you found this video helpful and thanks for watching.